everyone welcome back to my channel it has been a long time i was planning on recording on youtube a little bit more i've just been so inactive busy with life but i am back and i'm actually recording my breast augmentation journey and i'm just so so excited this is something i've wanted for so long like ever since i was younger like probably 15 i got bullied for it i was super insecure for just not having boobs and yeah, it's just like been a huge insecurity of mine. So I'm just so excited to feel feminine and just like woman in my skin and stuff. Um, I've been doing my research for years and everything and it was kind of just like spare of the moment and I'm just so excited. So I am here at the Meriton Suites in North Sydney. My surgery will be at Double Bay Hospital. Um, so I'm getting my surgery with Dr. Wessels. I just wanted to document as much as I possibly could just because there's not a whole lot out there for people to kind of find information from. And also I just kind of wanted to look back on it in the future. Um, but yeah, I'll try and update as much as I can. So my surgery is tomorrow morning, but I just wanted to give you guys as much information as possible. So as mentioned, I'm going to One Cosmetic. This is a bag that I received. So I want my recovery to be as smooth as possible. So I actually bought a lot of recovery stuff from this company called Relax and Recover. So that is the brand, Relax and Recover there. And I'll just kind of tell you guys what I got in the pack. So Relax and Recover does like a whole bunch of um, different packs. So for people who have had liposuction, people who have recently like had babies, all kinds of surgeries basically. By the way, this is not sponsored. It kind of sounds like it is, but I know someone else went through them and they're absolutely amazing. But I got a recovery pack for post-op uh, breast augmentation. So it's really cute. They gave you a little dry shampoo because um, you literally like can't shower yourself, can't wash yourself because you can't have your hands like up, can't have them above your head really. So that'll be really good. They also gave me a cute face mask as well. So I can just like pamper myself in the meantime because you can't really do anything for a few days. They gave me, they did give me a hair mask, but I left that one at home just because I was like, well, I can't really do my hair anyway. They also gave me some laxative sachets as well, just because the antibiotics and all the painkillers and everything like that, it does leave people very, very constipated and bloated. So they provide um, some of those as well. And then ice packs. So it's so cute because you can like put it around and your nipple just kind of <laughs> pokes through. Um, but that is the ice pack. And then you've got like a little case to go in there as well. Um, One Cosmetic has given me some as well. So I'll show you One Cosmetic once I've shown you these. Um, they also gave me some vitamin E cream. So that is this one just here. So it's recommended to rub this into your breasts um, prior to surgery for like a week or two. Just because it is going to stretch. So you want to avoid stretch marks. You also want to help the skin actually stretch so that's just going to help moisturize the area um, and they also gave me wipes as well so just like um, you know like baby wipes type thing because I think you can't shower for 24 hours post surgery uh, they also gave me a neck pillow as you would have seen just before so um, you have to stay upright for like about a week after your post surgery like you can't lay down um, just to help with the recovery and I've also got this pillow as well so just because you do have to sit upright it'll just kind of hold you upright so you have like your back in there and then it just kind of hugs you a little bit just because yeah using a couple of pillows is not as comfortable so i just wanted to make my recovery as comfortable as possible from one cosmetic they did give me a bag as well so i have got my post-op bra so i'm going to be a 10d which is so crazy because i've been like a minus my whole life <laughs> so for my type of implants i have to wear this post-op bra for 12 weeks straight. Some people who are getting a different type of implant, they only need it for six weeks. Um, however, I wanted to have the most natural looking breasts. So I am going a 425 cc and I'm using the Motiva implant. So it's just like a little bit more textured and it's just like a bit softer and I'm getting like the moderate type of profile. So that means basically when I'm standing up, it's going to slightly um, come down slightly rather than staying like bolted on appearance, if that makes sense. I am aware though for the first like six weeks or even like 12 months like it, it's different for everyone um it does kind of have that bolted on look appearance and then eventually they drop and it kind of like becomes encapsulated and then it's like i have to like bake in the oven to set basically so i've got that and then what is this oh it's just like a gift card or something i don't know what that is but anyway um so it's like a gift card uh this is collagen so just to give you a glow that i think that's just like another gift that they give you for post -op. And again, they have also given me some ice packs as well. So they're like a really pretty color. So yeah, so they are the ice packs they have given. This one here is recovery balm. So I think this is what you put on after you remove your um, bandages, like within a few weeks or something. And then this is the serum. Yeah, so this is the serum. So 
I can't even remember, but it's one of these that you apply like on the incision sites. I might have to ask again. Maybe this is the one you apply on the boobs. I don't really know. Um, so yeah, so I got a lot of stuff and yeah, post off as well. They give you like kind of recovery exercises just to eventually get you used to uh, moving around and like, yeah, just getting used to like moving around again. I guess. Did I say that right? I don't even know. I'm just so excited. I just, I can't believe it's happening. So literally like I told myself I wasn't going to compete again without boobs just because I just wanted to feel more woman. Just in general, I wanted them anyway, but I just feel like it does really help with the aesthetic of bodybuilding. So yeah, it's just something I've always wanted for myself. And I did tell my partner Liam that I wasn't going to jump on stage if I didn't have boobs again. And then I think, yeah, Taylor said prep start soon. So I was like, oh, whatever. I just, I won't get them. And then, yeah, just like out of nowhere, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to call them. So I called them for a consult and they're like, oh, we could get you in in two days. So I literally like booked a flight the next day and then just flew to Sydney for a day. And then, yeah, I called them within the seven day calling off period after the consult. And they're like, yeah, we can get you in in a few weeks. So yeah, it's just like, it's happened so sudden. It's just so exciting and I cannot wait. So I think that's all for me for now. I will keep you guys updated. So my surgery is at 11.45 a.m. tomorrow, which is Monday morning. And I have to fast from midnight tonight. So I'm going to go out for dinner tonight and enjoy a nice steak or something. And yeah, so exciting. Ready for one last supper. Can we just appreciate the back of this dress literally got it from general pants for like 80 dollars or something but mum and i are going to meet and wine co which will be lovely so mum will be my carer post op um liam was going to come but it just so happened the date of my surgery was actually when he had planned to go to japan so mum will be here so she came up a couple of days prior with me just so that way we could enjoy a nice little holiday some nice dinners and stuff um hopefully we can still go out for meals like maybe a few days post op but it really just depends on my recovery um so just keeping a very open mind regarding my recovery i don't want to get my hopes up too much that'll be fine but i also don't want to be negative and cause myself to have a bad experience so just keeping a very open mind but we are going to enjoy some dinner home from dinner had a lovely time so we went to meat and wine co so the entree we got was like rye with some butter which was amazing like the butter was like salted and oh, like the rye was just it was like warm but like crispy on the outside it was just so amazing and then for the main i got i think i just got like a normal rump steak or like eye fillet steak um some salad and potatoes on the side which was amazing that was so good and then we just quickly came back got dressed into something comfy walked along the um darling harbour and barangaroo which was so lovely at night it was raining a little bit so we <laughs> ventured off to big w got some umbrellas but now i think we're just going to kick our feet up probably watch a movie or something like that and yeah that's pretty much it i do have to fast from midnight tonight so i'll probably squeeze in one more meal before bed it is quite late. I usually don't eat after nine. It's nearly nine o'clock, but just because I know I have to fast for so long and like that includes water and everything like that. So I'm just going to try and get super hydrated and just have like one last meal, like probably cream of rice or something like that. Last meal is ready. So I'm having some cream of rice, which is actually cold. Tastes delicious with some fresh fruit. I'm like obsessed with fresh fruit at the moment. So I'm going to enjoy that. We're going to watch a movie and just kick our feet up. Good morning. Today is the day. I'm really nervous. <laughs> like it took me a fair while to get to sleep. And then, yeah, I just kind of kept waking up and like getting nervous and then I'd be fine. But I remember like when I was first trying to sleep, my heart was just like racing <laughs> and I'm pretty tired now just because I did barely sleep. But also as well, I've been like really dehydrated on this trip just because when I was unwell, I didn't feel like drinking water. Like, you know, when you're nauseous and you feel like water just makes you feel worse. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so I feel really dehydrated and I have to fast until the surgery. So it was meant to be at 11.45 and then they tried calling me at like, it was like just before seven, I was still asleep. And they're like, can you come in ASAP? We've had heaps of cancellations. And I was like, oh my God. So I tried calling them back. They didn't answer. So I don't know if I'm going in early, but that would be amazing. Cause that means I can eat and drink water earlier. <laughs> but the worst thing is I have like all of these cartilage piercings 
which I have to get professionally removed and put plastic in, which I was going to do yesterday, but I didn't end up going to the shop. So I was like, I'll just do it in the morning before surgery. And now they want me in earlier. So I'm like, oh my God, like, what do I do? Um, but I found a piercing parlor that's in the city, which probably be like a 10 minute train ride. I'll call them as soon as they open. For some reason, like piercing places here don't open till like 10 but I found a place that opens at 9.30. But right now I'm just going to braid my hair. So they want your hair like washed. They want you nice and clean before surgery, just cause you won't be able to shower for 24 hours and also just like less bacteria and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm just going to put a little bit of Moroccan oil in. I used to be a hairdresser, so I'm like really like, I need my oils and stuff, but I don't know if you can moisturize. I can't remember. I moisturized my face, but I didn't moisturize my body cause yeah, I'm just not too sure. I can't even remember. I just, I've forgotten all like the little details. <laughs> it's getting exciting. I just, I can't believe it's happening. <laughs> like, <laughs> last day without boobs. Oh my goodness. Um, I, just, I don't know how to feel. Like I'm, I'm pretty nervous, but I'm excited. It just, it doesn't feel real. It'll probably feel real when I get there. But yeah, the nerves are definitely kicking in. I'm just an anxious person in general. But I'm going to start braiding my hair, and then hopefully call the piercing parlor soon. hospital just gotten dressed i don't know if i'll be able to talk to you guys again before i go in but i'm feeling very nervous very excited um but yeah doctor should be here soon we're running a little bit late i did get here at 11 45 it's now 12 30 so hopefully i go in soon looking hot um i just met my anaesthetist i don't even know how to say it. um yes just met the guy who is doing my anaesthetic um, and I'm just getting so many good luck messages and stuff and talking to Liam and I'm actually getting like all emotional like I'm getting really teary because it's just like all the love and support everyone has given me to do this and go through it because so many people know how much it's affected me and how insecure I've been about it so I'm just so excited and overwhelmed and nervous but yeah, I'm just like getting all emotional so I just want to jump on and hopefully I'll see my doctor soon and then I'll see you when I'm all <laughs> drugged up and having snacks and everything like that so it is 7 30. what time do we get back i can't remember i can't remember five five mm. it was like four we left but at 4 30. i don't think i've ever experienced such pain in my life and like you don't realize how much you use your upper body and your arms even just to get into bed so mum keeps having to like help me into bed, prop me up. Um, but right now I'm just trying to like sip water. So mum just got me a straw and I can just like really slowly pull it up with my left hand. Can't do anything with my right hand. And I just ate like two cookies that the hospital gave me. I think I had like two bites of a sandwich when I was there, but I'm finding that anesthetic is making me really emotional. Like I just keep crying. It's like died off now. I just cried when mum helped me get back into bed though, but yeah, it's just made me very, very emotional and I can't stop crying. And just the pain in your chest, just even trying to breathe, it's just horrible. So you have to take really shallow breaths, but I'm going to have some Macca's fries and mum's going to make me some salmon just because I don't feel like something dry because I'm so dehydrated. I've got some Powerade as well. I'm just gonna chill. Gucci. Good morning. So it is Tuesday. Um, the pain is worse today, but I feel like I'm in higher spirits. Like I'm not crying every 10 seconds, which is nice. But yeah, I'm in so much pain. I have to take very shallow breaths. Falling asleep isn't too hard. It's more just like, trying to stay asleep just because the pain really keeps me awake and I do have to get mum to help me go to the toilet. The bloating's pretty bad as well like just with the painkillers and antibiotics and stuff it does make you very bloated but I do have a little bit of an appetite which is good like I had a few meals yesterday I think it took me a solid like 20 minutes just to eat a scotch finger just because my mouth was so dry so it was like I was having a sip of water having a bite of that but with my antibiotics I do have to have food with it so just had a little bit of toast and mum's just in the shower now so she's gonna run to cold soon and get us some pikelets so i just feel like a pancake breakfast all of my meals are probably just gonna be finger foods for a few days just so i can kind of 
grab it with my left finger but I wouldn't be able to put pressure like with a knife and fork at this rate I just like I can't even push myself up to get into bed so mum kind of has to lift me into bed and we have to use a stool and stuff so uh, it's quite difficult at the moment but right now I'm trying to do client work it's taking a very long time and it's quite hard to string a sentence together because my breaths are so shallow but yeah today we're really just going to relax and just watch movies eat what we can and yeah that's pretty much it for now so mum just went to the groceries for me we're having some pikelets this morning definitely different to how i usually eat at the moment i've got some ice packs in so i'm just gonna do like 20 minutes on 20 minutes off yeah i'm feeling like really drowsy now after all of my painkillers this hand i don't know if you can see it it's like all purple because <laughs> i'm keeping it low and i'm not moving it so i need to like work on circulating the blood again through my hands mum has made us some dinner so i've got salmon and salad mum's got steak and salad and some potatoes uh, but we've literally just been watching movies and icing and taking more meds <laughs> and just chilling out but i think we're gonna have a really early night tonight because i think we went to sleep like two-ish and then got up at eight so we're both very tired today good morning so it is wednesday second day post op i had a very big sleep in i got like nearly 12 hours sleep but the pain is just like so bad that i just want to get out of bed the painkillers work really well so just smashing all those just make you feel very dopey um, but yeah like it hurts to laugh it hurts to cry and I'm finding I'm very emotional like pretty much every time mum helps me into bed I start crying because I'm just like thanking her for helping me so yeah but I just got off the phone with Liam it was lovely to see him he's in Tokyo and it looks so so beautiful so it was good to talk to him but I'm going to just chill out just check all my client messages now and probably eat soon. Wow, I look like shit. <laughs> so I just had a little bit of a nap. I feel very knocked out today. So yesterday, I kind of like fought off the feeling of wanting to nap after some medication. Um, but today I'm just like really listening to my body. So I'm about to have some pikelets with strawberries. That's all my meds. Still got, still got more to go. And mum's laying them all out. Um, but yeah, the pain's really bad today, but it's usually going to be the worst like second or third day and then it starts to get better. So I'm going to eat these and possibly watch a movie. Good morning everyone. So it is Thursday. I feel like yesterday and today has probably been the most painful. Just with the anesthesia wearing off and I'm very, very bloated. So last night I did have some laxatives just so that hopefully I can start going to the toilet but yeah I'm like I'm so bloated I don't even have an appetite anymore just because I feel so full but I obviously have to eat when I do take all my antibiotics and stuff like that I do have my post-op appointment at 11:45 today I'm currently icing my little gals at the moment I think I had two naps yesterday as well I feel like I could go for another one but I really want to smash these client check-ins just because I am a few days behind so um yeah so i'm just i feel bad for my poor clients just waiting for me Alrighty, so i've just gotten home from my post-op appointment doctor said they are looking good and he just like adjusted my band so i have to wear this band around the bra just to like push them together so he's just adjusted that made it a little bit higher because we had it a little bit too low and yeah he said everything's looking good and he just recommended like moving around a little bit more and he also said to possibly stop taking as many painkillers but i'm still in so much pain so i don't really want to do that so just a little update it's nearly six o'clock and i've just tried doing a bunch of client work but it's really exhausting so i've just done like a few written ones but i'm experiencing so much discomfort in my tummy like it's just so bloated so I've taken some laxatives just to try and help but 
the worst thing is because it's just so like uncomfortable I don't want to drink water I don't want to eat and because I'm not drinking water I feel dehydrated and I just feel really exhausted so yeah it's just not a comfortable experience at all I tried getting out of bed by myself when I had a nap before but that did not go to plan so mum walked in on me just like hanging off the bed really badly good morning so it is today friday yeah. today is friday it's the last day in sydney we fly out this evening last night was the very first night i got myself out of bed by myself and went to the toilet but i adjusted my pillow slightly because my back is just so sore from sitting up so i put them a bit lower and I think this morning is like the most sore my right boob has ever been just because I wasn't as elevated. Mum's just making me some breakfast now to take some more painkillers so hopefully they kick in but yeah I'll definitely be taking extra painkillers today for the flight just to hopefully sleep on it. Um, I'm a little bit worried about flying just with this much pain but we've got a really late checkout which is good so I paid extra money to check out at 1pm so we've still got lots of time to just chill out and rest. Right, we are home, safe and sound. So I'm actually staying at mum's house tonight. I literally haven't gone to the toilet since before my surgery. So I'm just like so uncomfortable, don't really have an appetite. Um, but I'm going to have two Movicol sachets and then some of these as well to hopefully get some movement in. If that, I don't know if that's focusing. Um, and then I'll probably have a digestive enzyme as well, just with my meal, so hopefully can get the ball rolling. So I had a pretty good nap on the plane, which was good as well. Just took my painkillers before I got on, but I'm in so much pain today. Like I literally was scared they were going to explode on the plane. So I'm going to enjoy dinner and I'll speak to you guys later. Good morning. It is Saturday. I'm still in so much pain. Like. You're, you guys are probably watching the most negative post-surgery <laughs> vlog ever, but I still, oh God, I still am just like so dopey, so sore, still just like really struggling to do things and still have not gone to the toilet. I'm just so uncomfortable. I'm straight up not having a good time if I'm just being completely honest. I'm just so excited to start feeling better admittedly i can do a little bit more like i can bring my right arm to about there my left arm i can bring up more and like i'm able to go to the toilet by myself now i'll still have to get someone to shower me for a little while i just can't wait for the pain to go away i just thought i would do another update this morning i have been very emotional i was kind of expecting to feel a lot better now and like I just feel really bad for my mum just having to do everything for me and as a business owner I feel so pressured because I've got all these clients to respond to and obviously social media is like my business and like I just don't even have the energy to reply to people or post anything so I'm having a really rough day but I thought it would be good to talk about it because all of the other vlogs that I've seen of other girls who have had a breast augmentation it seemed very smooth for them but I just wanted to be transparent and just say that's not always the case it's actually really hard I thought five six days later I'd feel a lot better but like this morning I just can't stop crying and I just want to be able to do normal things and you know not feel so exhausted and have an appetite again but I just had some breakfast so I had some oats with some grated apple and banana in there so hopefully the fiber will kind of help me go to the toilet but i'm just still in so much pain and discomfort and 
I just want it to be over now. Right now, I'm just trying to get through my client check-ins, but yeah, it's it's not always a highlight reel like how it seems. You know, I know it'll be worth it because this is something I've always wanted, but yeah, the recovery is very hard. As long as you've got a good support system, like obviously I have my mum who has been so helpful, but she has to go back to work. And then Sharma will be looking after me when I get back home, which is so lovely. So I'm just so grateful for all of my clients and all the people that are helping me. And I just can't wait to see Liam as well for when he gets home from Japan. But yeah, social media isn't always what it seems. It's not always happy moments so I just felt like being really honest was important to share with you guys because it's not easy and yeah just the pressure and the stress of being a business owner is very hard and it's taking its toll so um mum's buying me like a special pillow that will hopefully help with my back pain when I sleep and then we'll probably head back to mine soon. Sharma is here. We are finally having our post-show treat together. It took what, a year? Yeah, very long time. It took a year. <laughs> so excited. So this is Biscoff cookie. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Oh, we're doing it. Are you ready? I have to grab it weirdly. Are you good? All right, cheers. Oh my god. Yum. Mmm. Mm. Is that white chocolate? Mmm. Oh my god. It's all gooey on the middle. I want to eat this big bit here. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. Okay. Mm. It's getting better. Hello. It is Sunday. And I am at Sharma's and Corey's house. But I'm not going to lie, like, I still feel fucking terrible. Like, I feel like this is probably the most negative breast augmentation vlog you guys are ever going to see. But I'm super transparent and honest. And it has been awful. I'm now going to the toilet. So, last night I took lots of laxatives. So, I don't know. I probably had, like, eight tablets. I had... I think like eight Movicol sachets because I was just in so much pain that I couldn't even drink water because I was just like so full that I felt like I was being poisoned by anything I was putting in my body. I was taking digestive enzymes as well. So these bad boys. I was also taking these as well, Quick Ease. So they're like, they're actually kind of yummy. They're like chewies. So I was having those after I would eat just to kind of relieve any indigestion. Last night as well, I had five, oh no, sorry. I bought a packet of fiber ones. I've now eaten all of them. So I had three last night, two today, and I had oats, I had dates, super high fiber foods. I have also stopped taking the strong painkillers as well to just because I was so sick of being constipated. Currently icing the boobies, but Cleavage is cleavaging. So that's exciting. We picked up some groceries before, so I'm just going to start making some dinner now. I'm just going to put some salmon in the air fryer. I bought some like healthy chips from Woolworths. Dinner is served. I feel like I made way too much, but that's fine. Hello everyone. We are one week post-op. So today is Monday and I just thought I would do like a general chit chat update kind of thing i'm not going to be vlogging every day like this might be like one of my last chit chats and then i'll do a q a when i feel like i am mentally ready for it but honestly this recovery is probably one of the hardest things i've been through i have been so emotional i think i spent probably three hours straight yesterday just crying you know i really miss my mum and liam i think like just being without them is hard as well but 
it's hard because like I'm such an independent person I love training I love being independent I love going for walks and I can't do any of those things I can't do anything I feel like I don't even have energy to hold a conversation I just feel like as a bodybuilder and a business owner, there is just so much pressure. Like, I feel like I just want to be alone, but I can't be alone because I need someone to do everything for me. Like, I can't take any pride in my appearance. I can't do my hair. I can't do my mascara. I struggle to brush my teeth. I can't shower by myself. So it's just really hard. Like I'm just like living in trackies and a jacket. I really struggle to put a jacket on by myself. I just feel exhausted. But yeah, I'm still really struggling. I thought it would be easier by now. Very negative <laughs> vlog at the moment. But the boobs are kind of settling more in place. Basically when you first get them, it's really strange because like the implant is like up here and then like your natural breast fat tissue is kind of like down here so it just looks like a block of pus or something stuck under your skin and then like a tiny bit of fat down there and it's like horrible to see the first day hello everyone as you can tell i am feeling much better um i am nearly five weeks post-op so today is the 9th of december and i had my surgery on the 6th of november so nearly five weeks post-op and I'm feeling so much better. I still have to wear the ugly strap and bra. So I'll be wearing that uh, until the 12 week mark, like 24 seven. So the only time I really take it off is just a shower. I'm starting to be a lot more independent, which is amazing. Like I can go for drives now, I can go for walks and it's just so good. Like you just, take everything for granted like all the little things like being able to shower yourself and stuff like that i went for a walk on the treadmill today at the gym and like i wouldn't think i'd be so happy to go to the gym to walk on a treadmill but i am actually recording on my phone as you can see i did bring my camera however the battery's flat <laughs> so i'm just recording on my phone and i had all these notes on my phone which i've now written on a notepad for you guys and i will be answering your questions as well but i just thought i would kind of talk about the timeline post op and then i can dive into the questions so the, for the first oh uh, when was it it was when i was crying <laughs> when wasn't i crying to be honest yeah mum dropped me home on the saturday i think and then sharma came over and then i stayed at sharma's house for a week and then she dropped me home i stayed home for one night on my own and in the morning i bought myself all these vitamins to help with the process so they were bio zinc b12 and vitamin e and i also reintroduced things that i was originally taking such as vitamin c magnesium and fish oil fish oil i don't really love taking because i find it repeats on me heaps and it's just so gross but i just want to do everything in my power to promote good healing and all those kinds of things i also started implementing collagen as well so i was drinking that in the mornings with my daily greens after sharma dropped me home i had to find another carer and mum took me under her wing and she actually took me on to her partner's farm so i was there for two weeks no oh my god i can't remember now i think it was yeah no i was there for two weeks so i was there for a long time so for a month i literally was at my home for like two nights and i just really missed being home but it was so good just to have people to look after me who really cared and you know just did everything for me because i literally could not do anything so at the two week mark when i was on the farm i had my two week checkup which was just on the phone i'd sent through some photos of my incision sites uh, they said that they looked good and then i changed well i took off the bandages changed new ones um and then as well they um gave me a couple of exercises it was literally just like shoulder rolls so she said to do those and just like chest openings just to kind of get used to moving and then she also said as well that I could start sleeping on my side at that point, but I was still sleeping elevated at that point because I still just was experiencing so much discomfort. But then I think halfway through that week, I did start to lay down uh, more flat and on my side, which was just so relieving for my back. Like you would not believe how painful it is to sleep elevated every night. Like it just fucks you back. So, um, so that was nice. Um, the Tuesday after that, so the next day, I put my shoes on for the very first time by myself 
admittedly it took me 15 minutes <laughs> because like you don't realize how much you use your chest muscles and you have to like pull your sock apart to get your foot in it so it was just yeah it was probably difficult but I did it and then I went for like six walks that day I felt like a free bird free bird a free bird that had just been like released into the wild after being in a cage for years and it was just amazing and then by the three week mark I took my bandages completely off and then I started applying cream and I didn't need bandages anymore and I also had my very first solo shower and put on my bra all by myself so it took me about three weeks to be able to do that everyone is so different there's only two other women I know that have struggled as much as I did post-op, but then like 10 other girls all seemed to be very, very cruisy. So it really is just person dependent. Me, myself, I literally started with nothing. Like I was like an A and then I went to a D. So obviously so much stretching involved and, you know, it just puts the body under so much stress to recover from that. So yeah, post-op has been very hard, but I'm looking at the positive um, in a sense where being very inactive and um, very sad and everything actually has really encouraged me to kind of just like embark on a healing journey and just really work on my mental health. So I've been reading a lot more and stuff and I've been finding a lot more enjoyment outside of, you know, the gym and all those kinds of things because obviously I can't do those things. So it was just like a whole lifestyle change and obviously, you know, losing complete independence, like not being able to wipe your own ass is very hard <laughs> but so we're here pretty much doing everything alone now and I should be able to go back to the gym to train legs within another week or so which is so exciting but it will just be like pin loaded stuff for quite a long time as well just really really going to take it easy because I would hate to spend as much as I did and then just fuck my surgery so Anyway, I'm going to get stuck into the questions now. This question is on the type and the size. So I went with the Motiva ergonomics implants. I went dual plane as well. So that's kind of like half under the muscle, half not. So you can go completely under the muscle, you can go on top or you can go dual plane, which is kind of half and half. So I did that option. And the size I went is 425cc. So obviously that's a pretty big jump in comparison to what I previously did. The doctor did show me uh, 380s and 425s, how they would look on my body using a 3D uh, image thingy and bob. And I didn't really notice too much of a difference between the 380 and the 425. And I was like, fuck it. I know so many girls always wish they went bigger and I want it to be worth it. And also as well, when they are bigger, they're going to create more cleavage due to more surface area being filled, if that makes sense. So I wanted to get the most natural looking boobs, which is why I went dual plane as well. That's also why, why I went ergonomics, um, uh, the Motiva ergonomics and they're textured as well, which does make it look more natural, but that also does mean longer recovery as well. So people who get textured implants need to wear their post-op bra for 12 weeks, whereas the ones without the textured implants, they usually just go six weeks. So that kind of, you know, states in itself that uh, the recovery is a lot longer. Um, how much did it cost? So for me, it cost me 9.9K. Some people do spend a little bit more, especially if they get fat grafting or if they need to change nipple placement or something like that or if they need to kind of align it like some people do have very uneven breasts and like one might require like an extra size implant to balance that and, you know some people like like their boobs would be like this so um yeah it, it is really person dependent again but i literally just got straight implants i must have had quite even breasts um so that is how much it cost for me and then this question is how was the pain so obviously the actual surgery you're asleep which is fantastic but waking up i literally could not breathe like just the horrible pain of the stretching because you, you gotta think like when you go from being flat chested you have to stretch your skin over this massive implant so yeah it was fucking painful <laughs> like i i'm actually still in pain now to this day like I mean, it, obviously it's nowhere near as bad now, but they're still very tender and I have to like moisturize my breasts. And like when I touch my nipple, I'm like, oh God, like it's just so painful. So yeah, it was very, very painful to say the least. I couldn't get myself in or out of bed for the first, I think three days. And yeah, like, oh, that, I don't know when the pain started really going away. I mean, it still hasn't to be fair, but it like stopped feeling excruciating maybe at like the two week mark, but yeah, the pain was horrible. Like it was just, it was so exhausting being in so much pain all day, every day. And I was taking so many painkillers and stuff. I stopped taking the strong painkillers from the hospital or the, um, 
yeah, that they prescribed just because they were like causing me such bad constipation. And then I switched to Panadol and Nurofen, but I actually ended up taking so much Panadol that I experienced overdose symptoms. So I had a little bit of a Dr. Google moment, but I just noticed I was having like fever, chills, struggling to regulate my temperature. I was nauseous. I had like vertigo and stuff. And then I Googled it and you can actually get that from too much Panadol. So and I never really take painkillers, so that just shows I was in a lot of pain. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, would you still do it now that you have done it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's something I've just wanted for so, so long. Regardless of competing, it's, you know, obviously the recovery... This is probably the hardest thing I've ever been through in my life, to be honest. I mean, like, I've had some pretty hard shit, like, mentally, but this has just been physically, mentally, like... Yeah, it's been really hard, but I wouldn't change it for the world. And, you know, I try to look at any hard experience as a positive to only make me stronger. And yeah, it's just something I've always wanted. And like, now that I do have boobs, like obviously I have to wear this fucking ugly shit under my tops, but like, I just can't wait until I can wear bikinis and feel beautiful in my skin. Well, not that I didn't feel beautiful already, but like just feel more woman and feminine and all those kinds of things. So yeah, I definitely still would have done it regardless, but yeah. Uh, does it feel awkward or weird to have something on your chest? Yeah, it does. Like, especially if I'm in bed and I'm rolling over, I feel like I have to like hold them. And it's just, and as well, like every time I went in public for the first two weeks, I was walking around like this because I was like, oh my God, someone's going to bump into them. Like, obviously because I was in pain as well. But yeah, it does feel quite strange. Like, and I think, uh, what was I doing? I think I leant over for some reason. I like pushed a button on like the air fryer or something. I was like, oh my God, I'm just not used to having them there. Uh, so it does feel a little bit strange, but I guess you just kind of get used to it. But it does feel very weird in the beginning, but I'm kind of getting used to it now. So does breast implant illness scare you? I have thought about it like once or twice, but I'm not really thinking about it too much. I mean, obviously I know that is a risk. I don't really know many people that have actually had it. So yeah, I haven't really put too much thought in it because I don't want to, you know, attract that to happen. I just want to try and think of what I do want, which is like obviously feeling good in my skin, all those kinds of things. So I'm trying to, you know, not think of it that way. I'm more just thinking of it as an empower thing, but it has crossed my mind probably once, but yeah, I think I'm just so happy to have boobs. So I'm like, eh, it's fine. And you know, if it comes to it, then obviously I'll get them removed immediately, but I'll cross that bridge if it happens, touch what it doesn't. <laughs> Um, and the last question is preparing for surgery. So first things first, do your research, like look into all of the companies, ask all of like any girl, you know, that's had surgery questions as much as you need, just gather as much information as possible. So you know what you're in for, you know, how much it's going to cost, you know, all those kinds of things. Um, and just as well, like, you know, that's the result you want because you could go to a surgeon and not have seen their Instagram page and then be like, oh, those tits don't look good. Like, you know, personally, I'll look at one specific clinic who's also in Sydney and I'm like, I don't really like how um, some of the other girls breasts have looked from them but I really liked how Dr Wessels does his so definitely do your research make sure you're sure on where you're going make sure make sure you're sure you're ready as well um, but also next one would be to make sure you have a carer so mine was a little bit tricky because Liam was meant to be home but uh, there was lots of issues with flights and lost passports and all these things so that in itself was a huge stressor not because I wanted him here like obviously I wanted him here but like I needed a carer with me at all times like I could not be left alone for more than 24 hours because like if I needed something off of the bench or like I couldn't even like hold my own laptop and go to another room for the first week you know I, I couldn't shower myself until the three week mark and stuff like that so make sure that you have a carer that is happy to look after you for a couple of weeks and you know set in stone that they will be able to look after you because when you're stressed and when you're constantly having to pack bags and go different places to have a carer it is very very stressful so yeah make sure you have a carer <laughs> also Leaning on to that, my next point is to have an amazing support system. So I had um, some amazing people that made me feel heard, made me feel seen, and they really took care of me. You know, obviously, mum was absolutely amazing in Sydney. And then I had Sharma, who has been through the exact same thing in terms of surgery. So having her just meant the world to me because she knows exactly what it was like. So, yeah, you definitely need a good support system that will you know, support you emotionally and physically. So, yeah, just make sure you have a good circle that will take care of you. Fourth point, 
finances obviously it is not cheap but also as well keep in mind if you are traveling interstate or overseas you're going to need money for accommodation you're going to need money for your flights all those kinds of things so make sure your finances are in check <laughs> so that way you can afford it and especially as well if you don't work for yourself you're going to have to take multiple weeks off of work so just keep that in mind as well uh, and then lastly mental health I feel like having your mental health in order prior to surgery is really important because honestly, like I said before, mentally and physically, this is like the hardest thing I've ever been through. And it really deterred me for the first like two and a half weeks. Like I was crying every day. Like I think the f like when I went to Sharma's, I felt so bad because I was just like locked in the room crying for hours. But yeah, you definitely do need to be mentally prepared and in a good mental state just because, as I said, it is so mentally challenging just having your complete independence stripped away from you and also not being able to do the physical things that make you happy, like go for walks, go to gym, all those kinds of things. So definitely make sure your mental state is right as well. But those are all of the points and those are also all of the questions. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, you can always shoot me a message on Instagram if you do have any questions as well, if I didn't cover anything that you might be interested in. But Thank you again for watching. I will see you in the next vlog. I don't know what it will be. Maybe a full day of eating because I still can't train at this point. But it was lovely to be back and I will see you guys very soon.